am Miss Green and welcome to Greenwood Elementary School. This is my fifth grade science class and we're going to be doing a review unit today on our Earth and Rocks unit, SOL 5.8. And so we're going to start today with just reviewing some of our vocabulary words. How can rocks change? There are a couple words that we've been talking about that describe how rocks can change. Who can tell me what weathering means? Go ahead. I love how you did this. We've been doing what hand motion for breaking? For weathering. Weathering means breaking. breaking. And it doesn't always mean that it's breaking in half. It could be chipping away. It could be sanding it down slowly over time. Weathering is when rocks break and they change form. They turn into what? What are those little pieces of rocks called? Sediment. sediment. Can you all say sediment? sediment? Sediment. Great. Another way is erosion. What does erosion mean? Sophia. Is the of movement. movement, when that sediment, once it has weathered or broken, it has now moved away, washed away. Do our motion for erosion. Moving away. That can be either by wind, by water, by humans, by animals. Somehow those little pieces of sediment, after they have weathered, they move to a new location. Pew. And what's the last way that rocks can change? They drop into a new location. They drop. Do it. What is that word for dropping to a new location? Hila? Uh, it starts with a D. It does. Uh, deposition. Deposition. Good. Deposition. So we can have rocks weather or break. Right, Emmanuel? Break. They can erode, move away, and then they drop in a new location. Great. How do tectonic plates on Earth's crust move? We talked about how they're big continental plates that cover the entire crust of the Earth. Even though that seems really big, the crust is actually the thinnest layer of Earth, right? How do we know that they move? The crust, the tectonic plates are sitting on what? What layer of Earth? The mantle. The mantle. And what is the mantle made of? Magma, which is mel melted molten rock. So it's kind of always moving. Just like when you boil water in a pot, the magma is always moving. Just like that boiling water is constantly moving. So we know that, te that the tectonic plates have moved. How? How do we know that they have moved to a new location on Earth? Delene. Absolutely. Who can repeat what she just said? Or add on to what she just said? Go ahead, Kaden. Pangea, basically. What's that? You just said a funny word. They were all the continents were at one time connected to one big supercontinent, which we called? Pangea. Say Pangea. 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 So, and Delene gave us the evidence for how we know Pangea existed. She said at some point we found fossils on like Antarctica that were of animals like reptiles and ferns and plants that we know can't survive in Antarctica today. So that must mean what? At some point, Antarctica moved from, over time, it slowly moved away from the equator down to the Arctic area. Great. So what are three ways that plates can move against each other? What is transform? What did those two words just do? Show me. Sliding past each other. What happens when the plates slide past each other? Earthquake. An earthquake probably forms. Right. Transform is when they move like this. Good. Another way is called convergent. Convergent. The plates can move together. What happens when they come together sometimes? Go ahead, Piros. Uh, is it volcanoes or a Either a mountain can form when one might go over top of the other one, or a volcano can form when that plate that goes underneath it spurs the rock to melt into molten lava, and then it can cause a volcano to erupt. Great job. And the last one is called 
Divergent. What happens when they at a divergent plate boundary? They move apart. What happens when they move apart like that? What can form right there? A trench, right? When it's kind of opened up, it's got like an open space right there, and that can be a trench, usually under the ocean. So we have transform. Show me transform. Show me diverge. Converge. Transform. Diverge. Converge. Great. Divergent just went away. All right, how are different rocks, types of rocks formed? There are three types of rocks. Take a look at the board. Metamorphic rocks. I have two different graphics here. What does this tell you about metamorphic rocks? Where do you think we can find them on Earth? Mustafa? Uh, deep, deep. What gave you that clue? Under pressure. Heat. It's under pressure and heat. heat. And where do we have the most heat and pressure in our Earth's layers? Yes. Down, down, down farther. The fa farther down you go, the higher the heat and higher the pressure. Right, so metamorphic rocks can be found there. What about igneous rocks? How do they form? Go ahead, Mason. Uh, they're formed by cooled lava or magma. Cooled lava or magma, when it erupts, or sometimes before it even erupts, they can cool underneath the ground. Uh, but somewhere near a volcano where that magma reaches the surface and cools, that causes an igneous rock. What's the last kind? Sedimentary. Sedimentary, how do they form? Go, Ilya. Look at his hands. What's he doing? Layers, layers, layers. That sediment we talked about that forms from weathering forms layers and layers and layers over time, forming a sedimentary rock. What can we find in sedimentary rocks because of that? Fossils. We can't find fossils in metamorphic rock because they would melt. And we can't find fossils in igneous rocks because they would melt. Like it's lava, right? So the only where it, type of rock you can find Fossils is in sedimentary. The older fossils are where? At the, bottom. At, the bottom. at the bottom, right? Because those layers keep, the newer layers are the ones that keep forming on top and on top. All right, in front of you, you have two starbursts. I want you to use these to create a sedimentary rock. Using this graphic and what you know about sedimentary rocks, how can you demonstrate a sedimentary rock with your two starbursts? I purposely gave you two different colors to, to represent two different what? Layers, right? Go ahead and do that right now. You're cementing them together. You're just flattening them kind of like a pancake, yeah? So as that yellow layer gets closer to the bottom and it gets deeper and deeper in earth, it's going to experience more what? Heat and pressure. Because of that, it'll turn into a metamorphic rock. Go ahead and how are we going to add heat and pressure to these? Squish them. You, you might blow into them, add some heat from your hands, from your breath, push on it on your desk. You got to get pressure too and we're going to make these two layers of sedimentary rock turn into a metamorphic. Heat, pressure. It takes time, doesn't it? It takes a lot more time to make a metamorphic rock than it does to make a sedimentary rock, usually. Heat, pressure. Ooh, do you see how it's kind of marbling? The two colors kind of look marbled. They're swirled together. That gives you a good example of a, an example of a metamorphic rock, which is marble, which we use in bathrooms and um, for statues and things like that. Make sure they're all swirled up. That's a beautiful marble stone you have there. Twist it up, twist it up. So pretty, it's like a piece of art. All right, once you have made your metamorphic rock, hold it up and look at it. Can you see layers in it anymore? No, so it is no longer sedimentary. You added a lot of heat and a lot of pressure over time and it has transformed into a totally different rock. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna leave your metamorphic rock to sit at the top cor right corner of your desk. Go ahead and put it at the top right corner of your desk. We're gonna leave it there and let it cool. What happens to a metamorphic rock when it has melted and then it cools? It is now a what? It's now an igneous rock. 
So after a couple minutes, we're going to leave them up there on our desk during this, um, during this little activity we're about to do. And when we're done, your rock will no longer feel hot. It'll feel cool and it'll be much more hard and it'll be not a metamorphic anymore, not a sedimentary anymore. It's going to be an igneous. igneous rock. Great. Miss T and I have created um, an activity for you guys to help review all these terms with the Ozobots. Give me a thumbs up if you like the Ozobots. Great. They're cute. Um, so what you're going to do is I've given you a total of seven clues. Your Ozobot is going to need to trek across the earth. And as he does that, he's going to come across some plate boundaries. He's going to come across some different types of rocks. He might see some ways that rocks can change, like some weathering, some erosion. And you need to give him the correct code to make sure he can safely go through his trek across the earth. So at the bottom of your sheet, you can see the code key. Where that, that first word in the code key is the correct answer to the question. And then underneath it is the code that you're going to put in that blank. Um, so for example, it might say something like, um, your Ozobot is going across the ocean floor and it comes across a trench. What type of boundary would form a trench? Divergent. So you would go to your code key, find the word divergent, and then see whatever code it is and write it there in the code name. I also have a little map for you that you're for your Ozobot to trek across the earth. It looks like this. And it has the codes labeled. So code one, two, three, all the way through seven. Your Ozobot should, if it gets all the codes correctly, it should make it all the way across its trek of the earth. To the finish. So you want to calibrate your Ozobot. You're going to hold his button by his brain for like three seconds, count to three, and he'll make a little noise. As soon as he makes his noise, you place him on the black circle and he'll go like, and then he'll be ready. And that's how you know he like woke up, did a little dance, and he was ready to go for the day. Okay? He had his coffee. He had his coffee, yeah. exactly. You might have to use the black marker to color in some of those white spaces down there. Just the printer was a little wonky, so you might have to color in, even on this part, color in some of those white spaces to make sure he dries effectively on your map. Sound good? Yes. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to get with a partner and get on a location in the room where you can work with an Ozobot. Earthquake. Um, earthquake is usually um, like trans. Trans yeah, transform. Yeah, transform. Um, a boundary that's too dangerous. Plates are moving apart from each other, creating a trench. Uh, I think that it's divergent because they, they may they yeah. move apart and make like a trench. Yeah, same. Okay. So what's the next one? This would be... So the plates are moving apart from each other. So when they move apart, that would be divergent. Because they're going apart and making a trench. The answer is... Oh, he's going to start this way. Okay. So start the blue right here. Okay. Um, because it could be weathering or erosion, but the key word is, what do you think? I don't know. I, I thought it's rough winds, but it's shit. So rough winds would be when something is being moved away by rough winds. That's what? Right. But if it's slowly being chipped, chipped is another word for breaking. So when it's being chipped away by the winds, that would be what? Weathering. Okay, wait, we've used convergent, divergent, weathering, igneous, and transform, right? Yeah. It's your turn to read it. Um, these smaller pieces of rock are now forming layers and being cemented together to form this new type of rock. Um, sedimentary. Yeah, sedimentary. Do you know that this one is sedimentary? 
What are the layers made of in sedimentary rocks? Sediment. Sediment, which is caused by? Close. Sediment is little. Why do you think that? Because when things break off, it becomes into sediment, and when they layer together, it becomes a sediment. What does sediment look like? It's like particles. Um, like Not this part. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like little chunks of rock. So like look at code five. It says that the new rock is being slowly being chipped away by the rough wind. So that chipping away, the weathering, that's correct, is like where it's slowly being chipped. It's, weathering is not always something breaking in half. It can be slowly over time, like a pebble in a creek. You know how soft pebbles are in creeks? They don't always start off that soft. What makes them soft and rounded? The weathering from the what? In the creek. Yeah, the, the current of the creek and it constantly being rubbed up against other things and chipping away. So that's weathering also. So that's how sediment, sediment is those tiny pieces that form layers and get cemented together. I wish that it could go faster. Because it did the night troubles, but it's going to go fast. This is, this is the turbo? Turbo. Oh, kind, it kind of sped up. Yeah. So when, so look down at your key and see what that code is. You see? Oh. Tornado. <laughs> so then you'll find tornado on here. I want to see what he does. Oh, he's doing it. Oh, it's T-A-J-I. All right, all eyes on me. Were you all able to calibrate your Ozobots to do some tricks? Give me a thumbs up if your Ozobot was able to do the correct code. All right, good. Uh, give me two claps if you learned something or this was a helpful review for you. Perfect. Um, all right, so what we need to do before we move on is you need to check your rocks and see if they have turned into igneous rocks. So head back to your desk. See if your rock has cooled. I'm going to give you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, stop tapping, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so how does your rock feel compared to it did about 20 minutes ago? Hold it harder, right, because it was was melted. It was melted, like really the heat and pressure from the metamorphic rock made it more malleable, more able to change in your hands. And now that it cooled, it has gotten a little bit harder, stiffer. It's kind of holding its shape. What type of rock is it now? Igneous. 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 It has cooled. It was melted, molten rock that cools, often found near a volcano, is an igneous rock. We hope you guys enjoyed our lesson today. Thank you for visiting us here in fifth grade at Greenwood Elementary School, where we are five houses. We are one family. We are grateful, accountable, trustworthy, optimistic, and respectful. T-A-T-O-R